Oh, people in Australia can watch this film? Or? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> For a lot of our patients that weren't able to come today. We did a class today at 10 in the morning and we're doing it again 6.15 for um, the people that, that work. So, it's good. We're ready to go. So this is our nutrition class based on the information that I gathered from Orlando and from Arizona from my, my past two nutritional postdoctorate work that I'm doing. There was so much information. You guys know me, I like to talk and, and as, I didn't want to get held up at the tables and get you guys uh, you know, in here like an hour or two while you're doing adjustments. So I said, let's just do all this at a after adjustment time and we'll get to all you guys all the information. So I was pretty excited. I have a couple people that thought it was so great this morning. They came back and want to see it again. <laughs> and brought some other people with that. So hopefully uh, you guys will gather something out of this for yourself as well. So this nutrition talk is, in the, is entitled The Theory of Everything. And it talks about how there is one process of the body nutrition wise that can affect all of the chronic diseases, heart disease, diabetes, arthritis, all these are affected by this one process. So in our office, for those of you who are new, there's a few people that uh, just came in earlier today and know what we're about at all, or there's some of you that have been with me for years, is that this is what we do in the office. We do the six phases to wellness. So there's structure, nutrition, emotion, toxicity, electromagnetic pollution, and allergies and sensitivity elimination. What we're gonna be talking about today is the nutrition and a little bit about the toxicity, which is the opposite side of nutrition. So what do we believe when it comes to nutrition? Isn't there just so much stuff out there about nutrition? What are you gonna believe? Uh, you know, there's newspapers, magazines, paper, the wacky guy down the street. I mean, what do you believe when it comes to nutrition? Well, what we like to focus on are the government articles that are uh, published on PubMed.com. And then we know that at the government site, there's issued 21 million articles on PubMed. Hmm. And they estimate there's 7,000 published articles. These aren't just newspaper articles. These are double-blind researched in great medical journals articles. And these are 7,000 a day. And I only read about 1,000 of these a day, so I'm getting way behind. <laughs> <laughs> so who has time to read all these things? So uh, we have a lot of people that disseminate this and we get this to, to you. So we what do we rely on when it comes to nutrition? Well, we rely on what we feel and what we experience to guide us. So you had that big Thanksgiving turkey and then everyone's like passed out like a half an hour later, right? Or you have a salad and who has ever said, oh my God, I ate way too much salad. You know, I can barely even function, right? So there's some obvious things that we know about health and then there's some stuff that we just really need to look at the research. Well, everything we have tonight is well researched, highly researched based on scientific facts and proven. So what is the purpose of nutrition? Unfortunately, it's not hanging out with the family, eating things that are fun for you or eating things that taste good, you know, like going over to Luca's and stuff. He's a good buddy of mine over here, but it's not, it's not the purpose of that. The purpose is to, is to, for nutrition, for sufficiency and purity. Not meant for entertainment, passing time, pampering emotions or depression. So when we look at the function of nutrition, what is it for? It's to actually feed the cells of your body. And we need to have proper nutrition, which is cellular sufficiency or cellular deficiency if you don't have that. So if you have the right nutrition, the cell's happy, it can function. But if you have toxicity in there, then it affects its functioning and we want to have purity, not toxicity. So what's sufficiency and purity in your cellular function with nutrition. So what nutrition do you need versus toxicities you should avoid? Well, we're going to talk about blood tests, which will talk, uh, tell you guys which each individual person needs for their requirements with your individual blood. But what we know as human beings is there's some things that you guys should be taking every day. And whether you have the green area here, these are all the nutrition you be, should, should be taking. Whereas this is, at the bottom, all the uh, heavy metals that you shouldn't be putting in your body. So vitamin D, we know that most Americans should be taking those 5,000 units per day. 
of vitamin D. And that's, that's regardless of whether you're in the sun or not. If you're in the sun, then you're going to get that vitamin D. In Florida, we're lucky to have that, but those people in the northern climates we're going to go into more detail in another slide is that they get more of their, their 5,000 units. And for most people, just getting your 5,000 units is going to be amazing for your health needs. And I've got a paper here called Nutritional Gems from the seminar, I was scribbling, writing notes of all these great things that were coming out in the PubMed literature and read a few of them for you with vitamin D, but we have these available for you. I've got about 10 pages of just these one-line zingers with great, great stuff for you. And we, uh, there's too much for me to print out so we can email them to you. But here's some things about vitamin D, and this is all on vitamin D, just these lines here. Things like winter, all winter colds are linked to vitamin D. If you get your vitamin D in there, and we're talking about what, vitamin D3, not D2, vitamin D3 is the active source. And that you need, in the winter times, and this is not particularly for Florida, but people that don't ever see the sun up north, like in Milwaukee where I used to live, <laughs> terrible, I'm glad I'm down here now. 10,000 international units during the, during the winter. So you need more of that in the winter time. And if you're really deficient in vitamin D, then you can do 10,000, 20,000 just to get up to where you need to be and then do your 5,000 per day. And we know that the melanin in darker people, like blacks, Hispanics, you know, people that have more melanin in their, in their skin, they need to be out in the sun for 40 to 60 minutes instead of 20. So the darker your skin is, yeah, you're protected from the sun, but you're also protected from getting vitamin D3. So the, the darker you are, the more sun you need and the more uh, vitamin D through supplementation you need to have. Uh, then we talk about UVB rays for vitamin D and tanning, the melanin production. You want to get the, vi the UVB rays that come from the sun, not the UVA that comes from the tanning salon. So UVA gives you what? Wrinkling and burning. So you get old leathery skin by going to the tanning salon and you're not getting your vitamin D Although there are some tanning songs that are you doing UVB. So anyway, I could go forever with all these, but I'm just going to give you these awesome uh, tidbits. I'll get emailed to you. <coughs> so omega-3 fatty acids, we've all talked about that and heard about omega-3s. That's going to be in the theory of everything we're talking about. We'll go in more in that detail. But you need omega-3 antioxidants because you don't want those omega-3s to oxidize in your body because then they can become poisonous and your body's not using them. Uh, then we have mitochondrial health, and this is only for adults. So do not do this for kids. Do, I, I don't take this for the kids. This is just for adults. You're going to do acetyl L-carnitine, alpha lipoic acid, and CoQ10 that are really important uh, free, free radical oxidizers, right? And then you're going to increase your glutathione, which is the number one antioxidant. And this is something we can't even give you. On our nutrition, it says glutathione, but it's actually something that's just made in the body. So we give you all the parts and pieces, it's kind of like at a craft fair, and then your body puts it all together as a craft inside the body with glutathione. And so for that, we're going to increase that with N-acetylcysteine and undenatured whey protein. And then resveratrol, you guys heard of resveratrol? Right? What is it, Rose? It comes from wine. It does. It actually, it actually comes from the Red grapes. Wine. It's in the, it's in the skins of, of the grape, right? Uh, but in order to get enough resveratrol for your body need, you need to drink nine to ten glasses of red wine. So I'm not advocating that at all. All right. In the pill form. So you need a lot of that for that resveratrol to work. And then also curcumin, which is also uh, just a great herb that's recommended for us to take every day that helps with inflammation and helps with free radicals. What you don't want to be having is mercury, lead, arsenic, copper, and biphenyl, which we're going to talk about what we're starting to do in the office is hair analysis testing. Mm. And so it's really complicated. We cut off a little piece of your hair and we send it in and they do the analysis, we come back, and then we, uh, we, we work with you on what you need to change with the toxicities in your body. So it's really, really cool. So all of these will increase free radical production, which will decrease your health. So one of the keys we talked about is free radicals, right? So who here knows what free radicals are? You're gonna know it in a second, right? Here we go. I, I call it the shoe monster of oxidation, all right? <laughs> so you guys remember, 
You guys remember the periodic chart, right? We're gonna have a quiz on that at the end. <laughs> I put it real down low here as a reference, is that all these different elements are ones that can be oxidized or reduced. And they call it oxidized because oxygen is the second biggest bully. I mean, if we look in the room here, we're looking at Scott, look how huge he is. He's a, bull, he's a bully in the room here. He can really take care of things. But one person he can't take care of is maybe Dennis here, who is, what? I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing with you. So let's say you're oxygen, right? And the, you can steal an electron from anybody in the room except for what's, what's the strongest molecule on the, on the table for that? Okay. She was here my, in my talk this morning, right? Fluoride, right? And so we can talk all about fluoride. My dentist doesn't like it when I talk about fluoride. I don't want to ever get fluoride. Don't put fluoride in my body. Fluoride is a thing here, and it, you cannot oxidize fluoride. It is a very, very reactive metal there. So, so let's say that we've got our oxygen molecule over there, and he comes over to me, and he steals my shoe, right? You steal my electron. And now I've got one electron short, right? So I'm going to go over here and I need to get an electron. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> so now I got an electron and I feel the outer valence of my. Sorry, it's pretty nasty. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, bits. <laughs> so now I. He has what? He has. He as the oxidizing agent has been reduced and I was oxidized because it took one of my electrons and now I took one of her electrons and what has she got to do now? Gotta She's got to run over and steal an electron. In your, in, your, <laughs> in, your, in your body, that's what's called the electron transport chain. And if you guys remember from your chemistry, it was in the Krebs cycle. Do you guys remember the Krebs cycle? You remember the Krebs cycle. This is our resident nurse here. <laughs> okay. So the Krebs cycle does what? It has a cascade of stealing electrons from everybody. And that's normal. That's called metabolism. But you don't want these other chemicals in your body doing it, especially not these heavy metals. Mm. So there's two types of antioxidants. One is exogenous and the other is endogenous. Nothing crazy going on here. I'm just tying my shoes, so I don't trip over. I was going to do my sandals today. I should have done that. Right? <laughs> okay, so we have exogenous versus endogenous. Do you ever hear stories like, you know, this 98-year-old woman, she like ate like a pound of bacon every day and drank whiskey and smoked cigars and she didn't eat any vegetables or fruits or anything, and how did she make it that way? Well, this is the secret to that right now. This is it's someone that has good endogenous antioxidants or free radicals. So this is someone, something that's made within the body. It's the most powerful one you have is glutathione. And that's something that we like to supplement people with every day is glutathione so that you can build yourself up and knock down these free radicals. So this lady was, and, and I got this off the internet, that they said she was like 112 or something like that. I put 102, but I don't think that was her lady. She was like 112. And my theory is if you need to hold my head up to eat, I mean, it's probably my turn to leave the, the, the earth, but she, they were holding their head up, you know, so she's 112 and she probably had something like these endogenous going on. Whereas what we all need to be clued into is the exogenous, which are the vitamins and minerals that are not made in the body. These are things that you need to take as supplements. And we know that this is something that we all have to do because there is something called nutritional inflation and Michael Pollan wrote about that in his book you guys know what nutritional inflation is it talks about an apple that you eat that you ate 50 years ago Not the same. in order in order to get the same nutrition you need to get eat three apples mm -hmm. for the same nutrition and you don't even want to eat a non-organic apple because of all the pesticides it's at the top of the list of the don'ts to eat so if you're gonna eat an apple or give that apple to your kids or family member you want to eat an apple that is organic that's one thing that I decided to completely have as a rule is I'm not eating that apple unless it's organic or I'm starving and I'm gonna <coughs> put in some chelates or some other <laughs> nutritional stuff, right? I'm gonna make other choices when it comes to that. So in order to get all this nutrition that we need, the in our society what we need to do is double or triple our caloric intake. And that's not good, right? Mm -hmm. Who wants to gain about 30 or 40 pounds? All the women raise their hand, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> so these are some of the toxins. And remember, toxins are anything that increases the production of free radicals above the level produced by the normal metabolism, which is the Krebs cycle that we talked about. These are carcinogens. Remember Aaron Brockovich? Mm -hmm. You guys remember that movie? She helped to get rid of these uh, prostaglandin E's, the hexavalent chromium or the chromium-6. Then there's endocrine disruptors, either pesticides and bis bisphenol A. What's this in? Bisphenol A, do you guys know that? Plastic. Plastic, right? Oh. And so when you're, mic if you're gonna microwave, you're gonna microwave in glass only, never in plastic, because the plastics are gonna come out mm -hmm. in there and it's very, very toxic. So you know, I was telling people earlier, I've got a favorite bowl that I like to eat in, it's plastic, but I'm not microwaving in. in <laughs> I'm gonna microwave in the glass and then I'm gonna put it in the plastic bowl. And then there's neurotoxins, mercury, lead, and arsenic that are very poisonous. And you gotta get these out of your body. How you out? Like what, brush your teeth or go to the bathroom? I mean, how, how do you get these out? You need to have a homeopathic tincture that actually goes in is like the mercury and then tracks it out of the cell. And then you get a, a oil that coagulates that and then the chelating agent that brings that out. So there's three products you need to get. I would never sell one without the other two. You need all three of those to get that out of your body. And we're gonna have the hair test to uh, verify what is it you have, and we can hair test again and see what, whether it's still in there, or what um, the percentages are of the heavy metals. And then these are the worst. These are the organochloride, chlorines, DDT, PCBs, many of the pesticides, and what do we see down there? Splenda, Splenda. or sucrose. You don't want to be eating that. Just put regular sugar in there yeah, and good. go and work out or something. Don't worry about the weight. But when you put Splenda or sucralose in there, you should never, never do that. And that's why when I go to, you know, church picnics and stuff, you know, I always eat like the salad or something because you never know what people are cooking with and baking with. You got to be really careful what you're putting in your body. What about fish? Mm -hmm. Highest level of mercury to avoid during your pre during your pregnancy. Right? So we only have one pregnant person here that we're aware of, so everyone else just eat all the toxic fish you want, right? <laughs> no, no. obviously if it's bad for you in pregnancy, then it's probably going to be bad for you all the time, so let's not eat that. Uh, the top of the list is tile fish. I was waiting for someone to ask me what that was. <laughs> the, the, she asked me this morning, I was like, when I, I didn't know what it was when I did the research on this, so I googled it, I read all about tile fish, and it was just so blah, it's like I don't even know what to tell you what it is. It's just a fish that's common in Florida. But anyway, that's something that, that you need to research <laughs> and find out. I really, I still didn't know what it was after I read about it. So then shark, we know what that is, right? And mm -hmm. jaws, nah, 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 right? So we know what <laughs> sharks are and swordfish. And so these are the levels of mercury, parts per million, that you shouldn't eat. And tuning, including tuna, you should never eat tuna, ever. Because yeah. of the toxicity in it. What's that? The tuna fish in the can? Oh yeah, toxicity is oh, wow. really high. Hmm. But Nancy Pelosi wow. says it's okay because she owns all okay. these. Look, of uh, she does is in her pocketbook. Yeah. That's right. Well, that. So do not eat the mercury is way too high. So here's where we get into stuff you just you don't want to fall asleep or not not off. We we'll get into the real heavy heavy duty uh, chemistry stuff here. But I'm gonna break it down into layman's terms for you. All right. This is what we're looking at when we look at the omega threes. So what is omega-3 and what is omega-6 and what is omega-9? What is that? You guys know? Fatty acids. What's that? Yeah, the fatty acids, but they're named that way by the double bond that's at the end of the molecule because alpha we know is beginning and omega is the end. So you go to the end of the molecule and you count three bonds in, or three, three molecules in, and that double bond is at three. So that's your acosinoids or your acosopeninoic acid is that's the thing you want to have. This is the good stuff. This is the fish oil that you need to have, right? And so that's the omega-3. And there's also omega-3 called alpha linoleic acid. That's what you get in flax and hemp and oh. walnuts. So this is your plant base. This is your fish base. This is also plant over here. This is GLA, which is gamma linoleic acid. And what this does is this uses, this allows this to get into the cell membrane of your body. So EPA is going, it's trying to get in the cells, and this is like the key, this is like the security guard that lets you swipe your card and get in the cell. So the GLA, or actually the uh, EPA, 
Also, it, it, it sends and uh, creates prostaglandin E3s and, and one, which are good, whereas prostaglandin E2 is bad. That's inflammation pain we're gonna see in the next slide. <laughs> and then that all, that all converts down to <coughs> docosohexanoic acid, which is the DHA, which you've probably seen before. So the key is in, in your fish oil, you need to have it in these ratios for it to work right. Because if you don't have the GLA, it's not gonna get in the cell, right? And if you have all of this, ALA, it doesn't convert to EPA, it only converts at 1.7 to 2% efficiency. And that was hard for me to learn as a vegetarian because I wanted to have just all of the plant-based stuff. But I realized, hey, no, you need to have this fish oil, you just have to have it, everyone needs it. So you make sure you need to, you have a good one. And you know, there's a lawsuit with CVA uh, Pharmacy, and I don't know if you guys have seen this, but they said that theirs was filtered Omegas. CVS. Oh, sorry, CVS, yeah. What's that, CVA? That's cardiovascular. Uh, <laughs> that's, not yeah. a, that's not a drug store. Yeah. Okay, I've been, too, I've been deep in the research. Pharmacy, thank you for that. I have to edit that on the film now. So anyway, they were getting sued because they said that they had microfiltrated Omegas. So you actually saw the lawsuit yeah, did, on that? Uh -huh. Yeah, and so what they were doing is, yeah, 10% of it was filtered, and then they were mixing in 90% that wasn't filtered. So you were actually getting the mercury lever with that. Oh so you gotta goodness. be careful of what you're buying. I mean, when you just get regular nutrition at Walmart or, or uh, Walgreens or something, you know, you're just gonna get what you pay for when you, when you buy those. As opposed to nutraceuticals are pharmaceutical grade nutrition. And that, so in other words, it's not, it's not drugs, it's nutrition, but it goes through all these rigorous tests and they have to prove that what's in there is actually in there. That's what a nutraceutical is. So here we got, and we've only got a few more slides of this and we get into the funner stuff, like pictures and everything, right? Okay, so we got linoleic acid, and this basically comes down to arachidonic acid and then converts down into these prostaglandin E2s. And so these are the stuff you've heard about, fibrosis, pain, degenerative disc disease, vascular disease, immune system dysfunction by increasing immunoglobulin in E and reducing immunoglobulin in G. Second cause of free radicals and increasing sympathetic nervous system pro, uh, production of catecholamines. So what that means in layman's terms is we have people eating corn-fed beef at McDonald's that drives this pathway and then it's activated by insulin. That's their Coca-Cola that they're drinking, right? So they got all this bad food coming down here, driving this pathway down to this pain and degenerative disease. Hmm. And, and then if you have EPA, that actually blocks this pathway and can help you from having pain. So people that are having, um, people are doing the, the fish oils, notice that their pain can actually reduce because it blocks this pathway where the delta-5 uh, desaturase enzyme drives down to this area here. Hmm. Now what does the medical profession do? You guys heard of COX inhibitors, mm -hmm. right? That's where this comes in. These COX <laughs> enzymes actually come in here and drive this, so they actually block these COX inhibitors, which causes all kinds of other pro problems, including the vitamin D pathway, which is 32 steps of these different processes, and it breaks it at step three and four. Mm. What's at step 11 is CoQ enzyme 10. And so that's why these people that are having these COX inhibitors, they need to take uh, CoQ10 because it's not being produced in that pathway. You guys are hanging in. I think this is the last slide. No, there's one more slide after this. So here's a theory of everything. When you have this corn, corn and some of the soy products in your fish, chicken, pigs, cows, as this drives all the way down, this arachidonic acid will lead to prostaglandin E2, which is the number one uh, pain producer, and it's the number one cause of cancer, hmm. as opposed to getting your uh, acosopeninoic acid or your EPA that blocks this and drives a pathway the other direction. Hmm. And of course, when they, when the medical doctors try and block this pathway, the body says, "Okay, well, we'll go over this pathway, that the locks instead of the cox." Hmm. And so, what are the ratios you need? Because I'm not saying you you want to not have any arachidonic acid or the omega-6s, those are okay, but you need to have the ratio. So you don't want to go below 1.5 arachidonic acid to EPA, you want your range to be 1.4 to 4. You have serious problems when your omega-6s are 10 to 1, 
Hmm. You have chronic incurable diseases at 15 to 1, and the average American is at fifth is 25 to 1. Oh, and omega-6 to omega-3 of 71, 70 to 1 is schizophrenia. Hmm. So I think this is the last one of these kind of slides, but I want to show you what resveratrol does and curcumin does. It blocks the pathway of interleukin-6 that drives the production of TH17, which is a killer T cell. You guys ever heard what a killer T cell is? Killer T cell is part of your immune system that goes out and attacks these antibodies. Uh, basically, you have bacteria, you have all these viruses, they attack it, so it says, hey, stay out of our castle. Hmm. You're, you're the opposing kingdom, stay out of that, right? So it blocks that, okay? Well, the problem is when this drives this pathway, it creates more and more of these. So you have all these soldiers and they get confused and instead of these soldiers attacking these foreign armies, they start attacking you. Yeah. And it's called an autoimmune disease. So we have rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, we have all these different autoimmune diseases that if you take resveratrol and curcumin together, that can block this pathway, keep it from driving to a huge, bad, excessive inflammatory response, creates severe inflame, blows up the entire area. Number one cause of autoimmunity is an overactive TH response. Interleukin-6 all drives that and it's, and it's cut off by the curcumin and the resveratrol. All right, well, what lovely telomeres you have, right? <laughs> so we need our telomeres. We have long telomeres, right? What are telomeres? They are the ends of the chromosomes. Yeah. And this is really exciting. Over the last couple of years, new research, and there's actually um, a, a, a lady, a PhD, that discovered this a couple of years ago, got the Nobel Prize, is that the length of your telomeres will determine the length of your life, yeah. of your age. Yeah. And so what happens is the chromosomes do what? They split the DNA. Remember it splits messenger RNA, it creates a protein, and it does this all the time throughout your life. Well, these are on the ends of your chromosomes to protect it. And so what happens is these kind of get worn out. And if not taken care of properly with nutrition, we know that a multivitamin used five years has shown research that it actually lengthens the telomeres. Now you can take an excellent multivitamin and that works, like the stuff that we sell, the, the nutraceuticals, or you can take a regular multivitamin and it still works, just not as well. But what you gotta realize, if you're taking a multivitamin, you gotta have no more than 100 micrograms of copper. A lot of them have copper in it. If there's more copper than that, throw it away. Copper goes right into your brain, goes through the blood-brain barrier and gets up in your head and causes Alzheimer's, causes all kinds of problems with that. If you have more copper, then 100 micrograms in your multivitamin, uh, throw it away. Right away, don't take any more of it. Now, the cool thing about these telomere studies is that it's just now being tested. You know, you can get this tested for $200, but it's not available to anyone but universities now. They're just doing research with it. So I can't even do it as a doctor, and you guys can't get it as a patient. So eventually we'll be able to do this and we'll be able to see how long we're going to live. I think mine's going to say 130 years. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. I don't, know. I don't know. All right, who's heard of the Blue Zones? Besides my two people from this morning. Right? The Blue Zones. These are zones in the, United, or in the world, there's five of them, where people statistically live a hundred years. In fact, in some places, we know that one out of three people here in Costa Rica, the Nicoya Peninsula, one out of three will live to 90. Hmm. And so these blue zones. So I like to bring this up with respect to genetics because we know that it's not genetics, it's lifestyle of what these people are doing. The, mo the closest to the home here is L uh, Loma Linda, California. You know who's there in that area? The Seventh-day Adventist uh, church. Vegetarian lifestyle. Now they're not all vegetarian. I just want to show, just point that out, Seventh-day Adventist. Then you have Okinawa, Japan. You've got Ikari, Ikaria. I did look that up on the internet. That's how it's spelled. Ikari, Ikaria. Greece. 
the Nicoya Peninsula, and then Sardinia, Italy. And these are people that Bootner, uh, Bootner studied for five years to find people that... Sorry, man, Sure, sure. I studied that long. That's my All right, so the decision is, I told, I'm told i going to tell Karen, I said, where, where are we going to move? We can go to uh, Okinawa, Japan, or we can go to the nice beaches of Nicoya Peninsula. <laughs> <laughs> So medicine wants you to believe it's about your genotype, but the truth is it's much more about your phenotype. So you have genes and people say, well, my mom had this, my grandmother had this, but it's about how you live. These blue zones show us that, how you eat, how you move, and how you think, what nutrition you're taking, how you're getting adjusted, getting the nerve system working at 100%, what you think about, how positive you are. All of these things are the phenotype, which is the expression of the genotype. So my question for you guys is, where do you guys want to be when you're 90? You want to be in the nursing home? Or do you want to be on the cruise ship? Because it's not about the genetics, it's about what she did differently in her life than what this fellow did differently in their life in general. So it's, it's how you eat, move, and think. Now, Hana, uh, Hanama Bay, Tough Ring, Hawaii, we talk about lifestyle, eat well, move well, think well. The, all these fish that are in this bay, all these beautiful colored fish over time were losing their color. And they found out through research that it was because the human beings that were visiting were feeding all this fish with this crappy human food. Mm -hmm. So they outlawed the food and the color started coming back to the fish. Mm -hmm. It wasn't genetic, it was what they were eating. And what about the Mississippi, Mississippi Basin dead zone, which is right here? And you have all these tributaries draining down in the Mississippi Basin. And there is nothing that can live in that area. Because the hypoxia, which means low oxygen, mm. nothing's able to survive there. So all the things that we're leasing into our river, rivers and streams are actually affecting our environment. And then we know multiple sclerosis de decreases with a change in latitude from north and south. So if you're those people that have mul uh, multiple sclerosis do much better here than they would up here because of what? What's affected by sunshine? D. Vitamin D, right? Vitamin D3 is the active form of that. And so the closer you are to the equator, the better you are, are with your vitamin D production. Also, your vitamin D, no matter where you are, is gonna be produced better when it's not dawn and when it's not dusk because the rays of the sun are, are parallel to our atmosphere and they don't penetrate through, they penetrate when the, the sun is high up in the sky. So uh, it'd be better to get your vitamin D after dawn and before dusk in the middle of the day when the sun is really high. <laughs> so we have, you guys weren't ready for that one, were you? <laughs> okay, so I wasn't ready either the second time I've done this. So this is actually the chiropractic neurology that we use in the office. And this is how we can affect so many things. Usually I just show you guys that chart right there, how the nerves go to different areas. But this is what we know in our research. And we know that we, this works because of the sixth sense, right? I'm not talking about what ghosts or anything, but we know there's five senses, right? Mm -hmm. Smell, hearing, taste, touch, touch, touch. sight. You get them all? Sight. Sight, sight right? Well, there's sight. But the sixth one, and I'm going to show you this. I'm going to do a little magic trick for you guys, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to take my finger, okay? I'm not going to look. I'm not going to smell. I'm not going to touch. I'm not going to use any of my five senses. We came in time for my magic trick, Genesis. Oh. Okay? And I'm going to put this behind my back, just like this. And I'm not going to look. I'm going to take my other finger. Without looking, I'm going to come right around here, and I'm going to grab my finger. I didn't even know where it was. <laughs> no one told me. There was no mirror over here. And what that's called is proprioception. That's knowing where your body's nerve, where your body parts through nerve endings are in space. Mm. And so that's what we use with chiropractic. Is one of the things where, when you get an adjustment, what's really happening is that proprioception is affecting the disc, the facet capsule, and the muscle spindle fiber. That goes right into the spinal cord. It synapses with the seventh laminar layer of the spinal cord 
and that goes to pre and post ganglionic fibers out to all these organs, the immune organs. So in layman's terms, you get an adjustment. Yeah, it, may, it helps with the pain, obviously. I mean, that's a no-brainer, we all know that. That's why we have so many people in here getting good results. But what it also does, you're not aware of, is this synapses with these different organs, in particular immune organs, mm -hmm. the bone marrow, the thymus, it helps with blood vessel di uh, diameter. That's why we know people that have higher low blood pressure, you get adjusted, that actually normalizes out your blood pressure. Mm -hmm. There's a direct uh, effect of that with adjustment. Parenchyma of the viscera, annulus of the disc, and then the muscle spinner fibrils. And then also, this is really awesome, it affects diabetes. By getting an adjustment, it changes the insulin B cells in the body. Hmm. And this is all in the PubMed, this is all research. And then the other stuff it does, it goes up into the brain and the pituitary, the thymus, and it does all these fun things too. And uh, we'll have you guys come back for that four hour lecture on this slide. <laughs> 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 all right. So how did chiropractic start, or how did it actually work? How, did, how are we still here today? I heard the story about Harvey Lillard. He was deaf, he got adjusted, he got his hearing back. That is how chiropractic started. But how we actually survived in the medical community is because of the 1918 flu. And I'm gonna briefly read over this here because it's really important. I want you to see these stats that in Davenport, Iowa, which is the, the beginning of chiropractic, 50 medical doctors cared for almost 5,000 cases with 274 deaths due to this influenza of 1918. But also in Davenport, there was 150 chiropractors that saw 1,635 cases with only one death. Huh. And in the state of Iowa, medical doctors treated 93,590 patients with 6,116 deaths, a loss of one patient out of every 15. In the same state, excluding Davenport, 4,735 patients were seen by chiropractors with a loss of only six patients, a loss of one patient out of every 789. And that's why there's so many people, the medical doctors couldn't take care of them, so they're going over the crazy chiropractors, and we were getting much, much better results as seen in the statistics. You can go look up this online. National figures show that 1,142 chiropractors cared for 46,394 for influenza during 1918 with a loss of only 54 patients. That's one out of 859. New York, New York City, let's look apples to apples here. 10,000 cases, right? 950 out of 10,000 died with medical methods, whereas only 25 out of 10,000 died using drugless methods, which mm. ones including chiropractic. So that's why we're still here today. That and B.J. Palmer, who you don't know who he is, he's a scary looking guy on the wall of history over there. We'll talk about <laughs> him and our half hour to health. So I can't put in diet without talking about exercise. And the reason I put this one is because this is something I just recently started doing. It's called CrossFit. And it's real crazy. I had a session today and uh, it was a 10 minute workout and it just nearly killed me. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. And what it does is it's based on the anthropological studies of the Paleolithic hunter gatherer. And again, that's all in the research. And what this does is it uses functional movements. So when you go to the gym and you kind of do this with your biceps, you know, you're not going to do that out in the real world. You know, you're going to bend down and pick something up. So they do a lot of different squatting, deadlifting, all these crazy things. And um, it actually combines weightlifting, sprinting, gymnastics, powerlifting, kettlebell training, plyometrics, rowing, and medicine ball training. So it mixes everything up. So it allows your body not to adapt to that workout. Because, you know, I've been working out most of my life lifting weights, and what do we do? What do we do, Scott? We go in the gym and we work out all the things we like to work. We pump chest, right? And we do other, th uh, do not so other things. But this does all the body parts with that. And this is for everyone. I put this lady here. I first saw this on the internet, and you know when you see things on the internet, like, ah, that can't be true. That's crazy. So I evaluated, I did a little bit of research on it. This lady is lifting all this, all this weight and she is actually trained up for that. So it's functional movement, which is really good. You guys can look into it. I can give you some more information on that, but I do want to have one slide that had to do with exercise. So here's the exciting part about the blood test, which I'm really, really excited. We're starting this. We started this today. We had a few people sign up this morning to do this. When you have a medical test, which we affectionately call the malpractice panel, okay? Uh -huh. You're getting this type of stuff. You're getting all the different chem pans and screenings, all this stuff. When you go to Quest Lab Fest, $758 for that, and they do a 
reference range that is medically based, more symptom based. You know, you got to be in this range not to have symptoms, not to have disease process. So what we're doing, and we learned about just not too long ago, is a functional medicine diagnostic test where we have our lab ranges, which are the medical ranges, but then we also have optimal ranges. So for example, here with the alkaline phosphatase, the medical test said you should be between 40 and 150 units, whereas we say you should be 60, 90. So medicine's saying you need to be in this range, whereas they're saying, no, you need to be in this range. And if you're outside of that range, it's, it's cool, it's like prevention, right? Even though you're a little bit outside of our range, we're gonna say, hey, there's a problem there, let's get this fixed with nutrition. Whereas with the medicine, oh, hey, you're fine, you're still in this range. You're still there, you're okay. <laughs> and then when you go out of that range, they give you drugs for that, to fix that. And so this, this test here that we're doing in the office here, from Quest Diagnosis, same lab, is $1,188. Expensive, expensive drug test. But we're through a co-op called Doctor's Choice, where we kind of go back door through Quest Labs, and we go through the same labs, but instead of $1,188 for that lab, you're getting in our office for $248. And for, th for this next couple weeks, since I just started, I want to get everyone tested. We're doing a 20% uh, discount off of that, so that just makes that 215 for all this test. I mean, you, you go look at Quest Lab and see how much it would cost to do all this stuff. So it's really, really amazing. And then with our program, I'm gonna show you in a second here, we take your questionnaires, we match it up with your lab values, we see exactly what nutrition that you need with this. Really, really exciting. And I told you about the hair analysis lab. I don't have any comparison because I don't know of any other medical places that are doing it. If you guys know of any, let me know. We'll see, but this is a lab we use for that and that's the $89 for that, um, uh, for that lab. So it's the testing of it and sitting down with me one-on-one -on -one going over all the findings and seeing what you need. You got a question? I do. So the blood test would not check for heavy metals? <coughs> it, it can, but it's more accurate in the hair okay. because the hair is, a, is an evaluation of what's been going on for about three or four months. And so yeah, there can be heavy metal in the blood, but what we know and what they've told us is that you want to look for heavy metals in the hair versus in the blood. And so I'm just going with the experts that I've been learning from over the last uh, several months and several what years. If we, do you think this would be one of the tests? Like um, it could be. You, what you got to do is you got to get it really close to the scalp. Um, the hair needs to be not dyed, which is not a problem there. Or if it is dyed, you know, you want to get, you want to get the hair that's the newest hair that's right here versus the one that's out here that's wet, weather torn and tattered and yeah, you know, a lot of stuff. You want to get as close to this as possible. Right so, now the only thing they do is the drug testing with hair and it. They can tell somebody's been using cocaine or whatever. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so that's what we're doing here. I'm really excited, really excited. So if you have questions, let us know about that. Um, also, Jamie, are you still here? Yes, sir. Okay. I need you to pass those bags out too. Um, what we do is we give you some samples and I'm also giving every single one of you guys a bottle of vitamin D3. So I want you guys to use that and let us know how that works with you here. It's so important. It's a no-brainer that you guys should be taking vitamin D3. If you're already taking some vitamin D3, then kind of compare it with what you're already taking. I like it because it doesn't really taste like anything, so it's not really bad on you taste it. And now remember, I'm kind of weird. I, I take, I, well, you guys don't know, I take vegetables, I blend them up and drink them. Okay, so that's kind of weird, and, and I like it, and it's good. You look any kind no, of person. No, no, I'm being pregnant. Is that okay for to take D3? Take the what? I'll buy the D3. D3? Yeah. Yeah, there shouldn't be a problem with that, but we can we can research that and make sure. So, uh, yeah, I can I can ask Neutralize, which is really good. I'm gonna get to a slide on Neutralize. This is what we use. And if there's any question I have, I have access and just picking up the phone, talking to uh, PhDs that that uh, their whole their whole study and their whole doctorate is actually on all this nutrition, so they would know for sure. So I'll go ahead and do that. So we're gonna each give we're gonna give you each a bottle of it. And if you want to hold off on taking it, no, take you it. can do that. <laughs> How many okay. do you take a day? This well, the 200. ones that we have are 2,500 mm -hmm. units mm -hmm. of um, international yeah. units. And I take two of them a day, right? And um, yeah, you don't get another bottle, another free bottle. Yeah. 
No, no, don't <laughs> leave, don't leave. You have a lot of good questions. So, and again, we talked about vitamin D earlier. If you're living up north, you're gonna need to take more. You might take 10,000 units because you're not in the sun at all. You know, we have the benefit of when we have the babies, there are studies that show that the babies are healthier and fuller with vitamin D3 because even though you don't take them out in the sun a lot, you take them from the car to the park, you know, the parking lot to the store, and they do get some exposure a lot more in Florida than you would anywhere else with that. But you need to be taken. Um, I take two of them a day, and you can just swallow them if you want to. Like I said, I'm a little crazy. I actually like, you know, the, they're kind of tall, uh, talc like they're kind of powdery and I kind of like to feel that in my mouth because it's kind of disintegrating so as again you know you might be a little crazy like me or you might want to just swallow it <laughs> Dennis is looking like that feels kind of weird but I like that <laughs> but, uh, but if you're a vegetarian you're used to a lot of different textures and stuff like that so you're okay, you're okay with that so but most of the other vitamin D3 tablets are like the the caps the uh gel gel, gel caps gel caps yeah. They're, they're yeah. gold and they're liquid. Well, I tell you, and I'm going to go over NutriWest in a little bit. NutriWest is absolutely amazing. Um, I did some research before going into this. I didn't want to carry nutrition because it's like, what do you go with? Who do you know? You know, I get all these uh, reps that come in here that want to sell me this nutrition. PhD person. I do my research. I've been learning a lot by this. But I want something that I can trust. I want to know something that's been tested by an independent agency to have what it actually says in there. I don't want to get some omega oil that's only 10% clean and they mix a bunch of other stuff in there. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to buy my nutrition anywhere else than through, I, do, I have one product I've been using for 13 years, which is Body Balance, and I know and I trust them. But aside from that, I'm doing everything with Neutral West because I know that it's clean and it's pure. And even though this one I think tastes really good, a lot of the stuff that we have here tastes terrible. Like total joint, I, did you did you taste the total joint? Yeah. I can't handle it. I gotta drink it down because I'm like that's really nasty, right? Total but water. it's actually 100% nutrition. There's no fillers in there. The only thing that has a little bit of fillers are the children's vitamins because you got to put something there for kids to take it. And even there. then, it's xylitol and uh, you know stevia and things that taste good and are natural for kids. Otherwise, you wouldn't get them. Um, Total Enzyme is really great. My daughter loves that. I open it up, put it in the mouth, and those of you who have been tested with me, we put that in the back and we give that to our testing it because a lot of you guys are just poor, poor, poor with your health, what you're eating and what you're doing and what you're not doing. So we got to kind of like an emergency room, get that adrenaline pumping right in before we can muscle test you for things in the office. So along with the blood tests that we do, we got these cool questionnaires. And I went through and I filled out every single one of them except for one. Uh, and not being a female, I couldn't fill out the female panel. But, so I, I tried yeah. to do all of them for you guys. But I did all of these, uh, fill these out. And one of the cool thing is once it's done, it gives you a subjective ass assessment of the areas of your body where you need help in the recommended nutrition. And we can pair that with your lab test and get you exactly what you need. Because don't you hate going to a vitamin shop or whatever, getting something, and you don't know if you're needing it or you're using it or you're absorbing it all? Well, so like that's what I love about this. I'm just like so excited. Said, to be get sure this you stuff. know what's in there before you take it. Even yeah, and remember the copper. Look yeah. at your multivitamins. If there's copper in it, over 100 micrograms. Now, that's not mega, uh, milligrams, it's micrograms. So it looks like a, a mm -hmm. crazy cursive M micrograms. Okay, we're almost done. I got just, I got about. 30 slides more. No, I'm just kidding. I got about two, three <laughs> slides more. All right. So this is why we trust NutriWest. Um, these two people here actually developed for NutriWest, and they're some of my mentors that I've been doing postdoctor training with, Dr. John Brimhall, who's been in practice for over 40 years, and Dr. Dan Murphy, who's in practice for over 30 years. And it's modern, efficient in-house manufacturing plant. It is what it says it is. It uses 1,200 raw materials in the plant and nearly 300 products. The cool thing, they do this disintegration testing, so they verify that everything's in that tablet and it absorbs in your body. They do is disintegrate to see how it disintegrates in your body, which is awesome. And then uh, products are sold strictly to your health care providers, so we can give you what you need. I mean, how many times have I tested you, Scott, where I said, oh, you're going to need this, and I test you, and you didn't need it, right? So I didn't sell you something you didn't need. I thought through your symptomatology in your presentation that you would need it, but I didn't sell it to you because you didn't need it after you tested me on it. So that's one of the things I love about this as well. And then all the nutrients are tested for heavy metal toxicity. Remember, those are the free radicals. And if you're taking nutrition that's giving you heavy metals, it's, you're doing the opposite of what you want to do. Make sure that the nutrition you're taking does not have heavy metals in there. 
And so this is what is, is recommended for us to do every day. Vitamin D3, I gave each guys a bottle of that. You can try that out, see how you guys like that. And then we got multiple uh, vitamin mineral supplement. I know NutriRest wouldn't like me saying this, but I think that you can use your own multivitamin as long as it doesn't have the increase of copper with that. That'd be the one thing that I would say, okay, if you're using a different brand, as long as it's really good and it's clean and it doesn't have that copper, I would say that's okay to use that. But if you don't know, bring it in and we'll test you and see if it's right for your body. Then we have the omega-3 fatty acids. For me, this is a no-brainer. I wanna make sure that I've got the right ratio of acosinoids and dopahexanoic acid and the alpha linoleic acid, all the different, the four different ones in there. So I, you know, I trust my health to having the omega-3 fatty acids. And then all the, also the cofactors, because remember, we don't want it to antioxidize in your body when you're doing that. And then mitochondrial health, that's only uh, for adults, not for kids. Acetylcarnitine, alpha lipoic acid, and CoQ, uh, CoQ, CoQ10, and then glutathione, and then there's resveratrol and the curcumin that are together in a complete neural. Where do you get those two last ones? And a neutral West product. Uh, yeah, the they're together. Um, I found a good bar at uh, Granary and also at the Vitamin Shop that has resveratrol in it, and it tastes way too good. So there, there may be some other things that you shouldn't be eating, but this is going to be hard to get other than in a nutrient. Because remember, we're saying that the wine to get in a wine, you need so much of it to drink. Yeah. So that's something you need. So anyone that would remember, this is autoimmune disease. <laughs> Someone that has um, has like lupus or um, where the body is is attacking itself. Do they right? consider scleroderma as well? Yeah, scleroderma would be one. Tight, shiny skin. We had a song about scleroderma. We learned in school. <laughs> anyway, I want to get you guys out of here. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I'd have to go in more detail on why you recommend it for him because we know we got a special case with him. Mm -hmm. But what we do is we'll take a blood test and we'll see exactly what's going on. And I'm, I'm the first one telling you, I'm not the expert at blood tests. You know, this is something I've been working on for a couple of years and more specifically the last two months. But you're not just, you're not just buying me, you're buying my whole team behind me. And when I meet with you on your blood test, you know, I may only spend 10 to 30 minutes with you, but I'm gonna be spending on the back end about an hour each case researching and making sure that I know what's going on as we go forward with this. And that's why I want to get as much experience and help as many, pe as many people as possible by doing this that I'm giving that 20% discount off of that lab test. And there's Dan Murphy. He's real cool to watch. I'm going to put his, um, his DVDs up in, yeah, up in here so you guys can watch. If you guys come early for an adjustment, you guys can watch that. He's really cool, fun to watch. And this is a shake that he makes with all of the nutrition. If you're hardcore like me, you just suck on them or swallow them. But if you want to put in a shake and stuff, you can do that. The top three things are pomegranate juice. Every male should be drinking pomegranate juice because of its health for the prostate and mm -hmm. how you can reverse prostate cancer. You want to be drinking pomegranate juice. So that's the juice we put in with this. Then frozen mixed berries. If you're going to do fruits, the best fruits to do are berries. Um, if you're doing strawberries, you got to make sure you wipe all the wash all the pesticides off yeah. that because that's one of the worst ones to get as far as strawberries and frozen berries. If you want to do yogurt, you can. I try and stay away from dairy. I'll do whey, which is a which is a protein in dairy, but I won't do casein because casein's really bad for you. But you can choose whether you want to do that in it or not, or you can be hardcore like me. It doesn't matter. You just got to get it in you. And then the complete AC, glutathione, the omega-3, the high D and the core level health reserve. You know, try doing all of those for a month and see what happens with you, see how well your, well your health is. So my question is, where do you guys want to end up? <laughs> you know, do you, want to, do you want to be in the nursing home? Do you want to be on your cruise ship? <laughs> Not on this one, right? Don't let your lifestyle sink your cruise ship. Right? It's so easy to say, well, I got a little bit of pain here, or I can do that later. You need to take each day by day and take the right nutrition that you need. Because every one of us is on a, on a spiral staircase, and every day we're either taking a step up 
or taking a step down. So think about that each day with the nutrition that you need to take. If you have a lot of nutrition and you want me to check it, bring it in. We'll do some muscle testing with you to see if your nutrition is good. I see a lot of people yawning. Either I'm really boring or we need to get some adrenal support out to you guys from DSF, right? And I know you don't want to test a D taste the DSF, right? Who's tasted DSF? What do you guys think? Pretty awesome, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it stands like for great. Delicious it's Salivation great. Formula. <laughs> Very good. Excellent. So what questions do we have? What can you get the pomegranate juice? Oh, hold on just a second. And did anyone know how long I was for time? How was that? No. So Pretty good. Yeah. What? Not An hour? 55 minutes. 55 minutes. Good. So I was doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. I just, uh, a few more minutes to the earlier group today. So you guys ask some questions. <laughs> One question. Yeah. The uh, the blood test, is that covered under the insurance or was that out of pocket? You know, that's a good question. I've been researching that with them and it's really going to depend on your insurance. And every single one of these have different plans and you guys know that. Some mm -hmm. people have great coverage. They don't have any co-pays with chiropractic and other people, you know, you, need, you can get three visits and only if you stop by like 10 medical doctors to get referrals for it or something. So it really depends where you are. Um, if you want to and you want to bring in a blood test that you've done, we'll just do a $50 charge for me to run it through my programs and give you an analysis of that. I would rather, however, if you can do it and, and we can run it through your insurance company or you do a cash with a discount because you remember that's eleven hundred dollar test one thousand one hundred eighty eight that we're doing for 215 if you can do that i know a lot of people can't but if you could do that then we're going to have much more tests than you would at the regular blood i mean you mm -hmm. couldn't see it all it was on a couple pages you know i knew i had to put all the other notes in there and i don't want to bore you guys too much but it's a really long test there's tons of stuff in there that test that the medical tests don't test for. And that's why I couldn't even find one that was that was a comparison to that. I gave you the one before that was $758 from Quest. Mm -hmm. And really, we can do everything from Quest. I was telling you guys earlier, this is the book I got. When I signed up to be someone that could do Quest, this is the book I got. And I kid you not, I almost threw it away. I thought it was a telephone book. <laughs> You know, because Jamie's always giving me stuff, and I was just about to throw it away, and I saw this little logo, and I was like, that's Quest. So every single test in here, we can get you at 80% off. Okay? Now, whether it'll work through your medical insurance or something, I don't know. It's, that's really new for us. For those of you that don't have medical insurance, it's a no-brainer to do the test that we have here. For those of you that have medical insurance, we're working with our biller. But I think all they're going to do is the medical type test because it has to be. So remember, the medical system is looking for certain things. They're looking for a chem panel with a CV, CVC and a differential, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Because I, I mean, you're a. Hematocrit. Looking for hematocrit, A1C, hemoglobin, you know, a few things like that. But they're not looking for the different heavy metals. They're not looking for all the other stuff that we're doing. So you're going to get a lot more with this test. So even though I want to help you guys out if there's you know, a financial issue and we want to evaluate what's already done, I'm kind of torn, torn between I'm going to be limited with what I can really tell you because I'm not seeing the whole picture. So I don't know how that's all going to play out in the practice because, again, we just started this this morning. We just signed up a few people, and, we, you know, and I don't even know, you know where this price is going to stay. We may need, know that we need more tests to put in there, and I don't know. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying, oh, hey, buy it now or it's going to be, you know, you're gone tomorrow. I'm not. I'm not giving that message. We're going to do that 20% off probably for the next, you know, week, couple weeks till we get enough people that we got a, a good system down and everything. Because I don't know if I need need to meet with you guys for five minutes or 20 or what. And some people need more time than others. I just don't know. And as you can see from our practice today, we you know we have a very efficient and proficient practice. I don't want you to wait. Any of you guys to wait. 20, 30 minutes while I'm in doing a blood test. So we got to yeah. figure out how we're going to work that into our, our already efficient thing. It was just so important that I wanted to do it. And so that's what happens. I, I get the urge to help people put something in and then I kind of mess up my other systems. <laughs> but I just I definitely want to do it. It's just so great. I was blown away with what I learned at these seminars and stuff. And I, what, I, what I realized the most is that the medical profession is not doing what needs to be done for wellness and for your health. How many hours do doctors have nutrition yep. courses? 
They only have the well. Sometimes they have an hour in there, yeah. and it's the it's the dairy association that comes in and talks about formula. Yeah, but they don't know anything so we know how about that nutrition, is. right? I think they're doing more now. And maybe they are. Yeah, it's yeah, hard to keep have, up with it. Maybe they're like, it's hey, become really such an issue where they've, they've had to. Years ago, years gone by. Maybe it's a couple hours, but it's just not in that system to do nutrition with that. The trend now is, I mean, the statistics are. Sh they've got to take a look at that. Yeah, it really yeah. has. It's, really it's, it's all over the literature, PubMed. With that. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Do you have a website or something we could go and find that, that hunter-gather diet? Um, yeah, you can just look at it. There's Dr. Corbain is the is the leading research scientist on it now. He took over studies from, he was an apprentice to um, Dr. Boyd Eaton that was doing the Paleolithic hunter-gatherer diet. And basically what that is, is eating all the things that are genetically meant for you to eat from when we were hunters and gatherers and a, back when running we grew around in caves yeah. and all that other kind of stuff. When we so, grew our own, we were a lot better off. <laughs> yeah, before we got into agriculture with the weeds and the grains and before we got into farming and, and all that stuff. It's so, your own livestock. <laughs> Um, does it tell about if you have low hormones or things like that? Yeah, there's a there's a uh, TSH panel. Mm -hmm. So you got uh, THH, a thyroid stimulating hormone. You got trioxo, uh, trioxo uh, thyroid, and you see T3 and T4, and you got all the different stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, it's all in there. I mean, I wanted to list the whole thing out, but like I said, it'd been too much. I mean, just just the CMP panels, like 15 different things, albumin. Uh, L ALT, AST, which is uh, GPOT and G G GTST. I mean, it's just there's just tons of stuff in there. And so that's what I'm saying. When I get these back, I'm going to spend time on my own going over them, you know, with the PhD and the study. But it'll, it'll all be out there with the different nutrition that you need to take, which is cool. Isn't that great? You, you walk in the vitamin shop, they got all this stuff around there, and a lot of it's good, a lot of it you don't need it, but you can just get what's targeted for your blood. Mm -hmm. Awesome.